So I saw X-Men Dark Phoenix, and this movie is being absolutely destroyed by critics. And what surprised me is that I didn't find it that bad. Did it have problems? Hell yeah. But it wasn't anywhere near as bad as I heard. Now I can talk about the small problems all day, but the biggest problems with this movie is all down to the pacing and the characters. It really felt like the first hour of the movie did everything it could to villainize Xavier. He recklessly sends his X-Men to do a mission which almost kills some of them, and that's not something Xavier would do, but the movie just had him do that to make him come off as incompetent and then to have Mystique tell him off. Speaking of which, we get this incredibly forced scene which came out of nowhere and connects to nothing. It's funny. I can't actually remember the last time you were the one risking something. And by the way, the women are always saving the men around here. You might want to think about changing the name to X-Women. Where do I begin? First off, Xavier is risking something every day. He can easily go back to his drug addiction and get his walking back, but he doesn't. This way he can stay sane and make the world a better place for mutants out there. And Mystique has the gall to say she doesn't remember the last time he risked anything. Not to mention that he risked his life in Apocalypse just so he could save her. And to top it off, the whole the women are doing most of the saving is just needlessly divisive. I always saw the X-Men as a family unit throughout these films. They have always shared their victories, and they never tally them up and use them as ammunition against each other, as everything they do is a team effort. The same goes for the mission in this movie, and for her to turn it into a boys versus girls thing was just uncalled for. And right after that, we see Hank giving Jean a medical check. What was that about the women saving the men again? Also, Mystique says at one point in the movie, I love Charles, but he's different, and I got really annoyed with her when she said that. Because the thing is, even when Xavier was normal in X-Men Apocalypse, she still wasn't happy with him. Nothing seems to be good enough for her, so when she has a problem with him, it just comes across like she is the one with a bigger problem than he is. If you were to ask me where's the finish line for Mystique, what would make her happy and feel complete, I wouldn't be able to give you an answer. And on the subject of Mystique, Jennifer Lawrence wasn't as bad with her acting as she was in X-Men Apocalypse, but it's still obvious that she doesn't want to be here, and I was just waiting for her to go. I'm also a wildly bad actor. Did we see <laughs> the only one you're the only one. Oh no, now there's gonna be tons of comments tonight. No! Nope. In the case of the last two X-Men movies, I'm saying you are. Going back to the other problems with the movie, Jean is somehow able to breathe in space, even though we clearly see that Nightcrawler needs to wear a helmet. And the relationship she has with Scott is underdeveloped and severely lacking. And to be honest, it feels like it's somewhat lacking with everyone else as well. And that's a big problem for a storyline like this, as she is supposed to be turning on her team in this one, her family. And the movie doesn't give the necessary time to develop her hatred towards them. And as a result, when she turns, I didn't even feel sad or anything. I was entertained by it, but I wasn't emotionally drawn drawn in. And there was a very odd scene where she gets all violent and then says, I thought you said that you protect mutants. Even she should realize that you can't ask for someone's help right after you attack them. That little moment really struck me as odd. And the special effects for the most part were fine, but when we first see Xavier use Cerebro in this film, we don't even get a big out of body transition like what happens when we usually step into Cerebro. And it baffles me that they didn't get this right even though they have always gotten it right in the previous films. And in general, there seems to be something off about the quality control of this film. The only other time an X-Men movie had quality control problems was with X-Men Origins Wolverine. And those are my biggest problems with this movie. Now it's time to talk about the stuff I liked, and there is a lot. Now as much as I had a problem with Xavier in the first act of the movie, as soon as he and the team start searching for Jean in the second act, that's when he becomes the Xavier we know and love, and James McAvoy absolutely killed it as he always does in these scenes. And there was also a really great dialogue scene between Jean and Magneto. I thought it was a very genuine and all round fantastic scene. And the questions Magneto asks her is exactly the questions I wanted him to ask. And there is one question in particular that he repeatedly asks her over and over again and it was so intense and I was on the edge of my seat. And it's character moments and scenes like these that really reminded me why I love these interpretations of the X-Men so much. And I know for a fact, I really will miss them. And the action scenes were really good. I honestly didn't expect them to be anywhere near as good as they were. They were brutal and very creative, especially when Magneto does his thing and controls metal. And for the first time, we even get Xavier contributing to the fight. And these action scenes were so well put together. There was one action scene though that felt a little out of character. We don't see anyone get hurt, but I'm sure there must have been some casualties as a result of our heroes fighting. And the music in this movie was composed by Hans Zimmer, who despite 
retiring from scoring superhero soundtracks after Batman vs Superman, he's come back in the game. And the soundtrack was very nice, and by the end of the movie, the main melody was still playing in my head. It's by no means his best work, but it was still very good. And this movie actually gives the X-Men an ending, and I liked it. But it doesn't add up or connect in any way to the new future that Days of Future Past showed us. I'm sure you can come up with some theories and connect them, but it's shaky. And there was one thing about the school that didn't make sense when the movie was over. I thought it was giving a certain character credit in a way that didn't really make sense or emotionally resonate with me. But yeah, I still had a really good time with this movie, and I was almost going to give it one point higher, but the movie is kind of forgettable, and that's why it gets a very good 6 out of 10. I can say with the utmost confidence that I have seen comic book films that are much worse than this, and even they get more favourable reviews. So no, I don't think Dark Phoenix is deserving of all the hate it's been getting. There is a great movie in here somewhere, but the film needed to be longer in order to fully flesh it out. And that's another thing, this movie is too short. A big story like this should not be 2 hours. It should be 2 hours and 30 minutes, or even 3 hours. Then this movie would have the time to reach its full potential. But as is, it isn't long enough to properly execute this story. If it slowed down and allowed the scenes to fully develop, then this would have been a much better movie, and it would have truly been special. But unfortunately, it comes across as a missed opportunity. Also, this movie feels like it came out one year too late. If it came out on November 2018 as it was initially intended, then more people would probably be interested in seeing it. But right now, it feels like it has been released too late and people have moved on to other things. Did I think it was better than The Last Stand? I'm not gonna tell you. I wasn't originally going to do this, but after watching Dark Phoenix, I actually think I can make a versus video between the two movies, and I'll try to do it when Dark Phoenix comes out on DVD so I can use footage from the actual film. So that's it for another quick movie review guys, stay tuned as I have plenty more great versus videos in the works and I am working as hard as I can to get them out. As always, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up as that really helps my channel in getting noticed, and I will catch all of you very soon. Take care.